surprise is going to come up huge. Yeah, Jirachi, one of the cards that really makes this deck function, just being able to use Stellar Wish every single turn whenever you need it to just grab a trainer out of your top five cards. We are off. Magnus Peterson is starting off, of course. As I say it, he is using that Jirachi ability. Looking at the top five cards of his deck, has a few options. Ends up taking the Switch. That's going to go right into the hand. He does have an Ultra Ball as well. Looks like he's getting ready for a turn one Lily, which is a deck that we've, which is a play that we've seen out of these decks and a lot of decks in the format right now, uh, time and time again. Yeah, uh, Lily has just been a stalwart of the format, uh, really being able to just push your advantage turn one, and then from then on, you have such a big hand size. And with Jirachi, you're just adding to it every turn. That means you can play cards like Guzma, play cards like Volkner, where you don't actually increase your hand size, but you still get to see so many different cards that it doesn't really matter. Looks like the Ultra Ball is going to find the namesake of the deck, that Zapdos, your kind of primary attacker here. Thunderous Assault, very efficient, uh, single prize attacker, single energy. Magnus plays on the escape board, really important card with that Jirachi, just a perfect combo to be able to retreat, even when you're affected by a status condition, it's retreat for free as well. All right, and there we see that Lily drawing six cards. Has the Tapu Coco Prism on the bench. It is fine for now, but that's one of the more important cards in this matchup. It might be a liability. We see Magnus go ahead and retreat right to the other Jirachi. We're going to see another Stellar Wish. This is the power of the combination of Jirachi and a skateboard. And you can just see how much work and so much card advantage these Jirachis are providing. Yeah, this is the benefit of going first, especially since you know you can't attack. Well, I'm going to get an extra card off the second Jirachi as well. Yeah, might as well. That second Stellar Wish finds the Lily. Lily, after the turn one, is only going to drop to six cards, of course, but Mag Magnus was able to use his first Lily to have that full hand that you see on your screen now. So throughout uh, the past uh, few tournaments, at least, uh, since Zorark and Zapdos have been in the format fighting against each other, I believe Oceania was the, the very first one, uh, people have kind of a, a love-hate relationship with this matchup. Uh, Lolan Muck puts in a lot of work against Zapdos. Uh, it relies so heavily on Jirachi, Lar uh, Marshadow, Let Loose, and Tapu Koko Prism, Tapu Koko GX, that uh, it makes targeting down a Lolan Grimer, Ditto, one of the top priorities. Makes a lot of sense to me. We see a nest ball happening for Stefan. Just going to take a look at his deck, make sure he understands what's prized and how he's going to orchestrate the rest of this game. Got to imagine a Zorua is going to come to the bench. Here's a Pokemon communication. Yeah, it won't be needing that Naganatal GX this game. Nah, Naganatal GX, one of the innovations that this team has put together for the Zorua deck, but won't be coming in too handy. And there is the Ditto Prism Star that you just mentioned, able to turn that into any stage one Pokemon a little bit later in the game. Yeah, we've seen one of the big resurgence of Wobbuffet as a tech card and a lot of these lightning decks uh, just to try and counter opposing Tapu Koko Prisms as well as Ditto Prism. Uh, yeah, both cards that are on the screen as we speak. Yeah. We're seeing a first turn Lily on Stefan's side as well, drawing him five cards all the way back up to eight. It was not a bad Lily either, Nest Ball and Ultra Ball, meaning he'll be able to get a couple more basics in play because as you know, against Zapdos, they always have the Guzma. Yeah, Zapdos is going to base around this switching effect, and the Guzma is the most powerful one, putting that Zapdos active, being able to do a lot more damage, and you want to make sure that you have multiple copies of all of your um, basic Pokemon there, which Stefan is doing. Hit the Nest Ball off the Lily. The Nest Ball found him, a Zoroa. Now feeling pretty comfortable with two Zoroa and the Ditto. He does also have that Pokemon oh, communication. Another one. Does not end with him. Pokemon Communication is going to turn a Tapu Lele GX into what looks like a seal. And again, Dugong is one of the more important cards in this matchup. It does take two Electro Power uh, for Zapdos to knock it out. Uh, it has 120 HP. And if you can actually get two dual Blizzards off, it's going to be huge. And no energy card for Stefan. He's just going to end up passing the turn. Jirachi wakes up, and action is back on Magnus. What is Magnus looking for now? What, what, what is he trying to do at this point in the game? So he's done his complete turn one, and now you really just, all right, I got to step on the gas. I need to take out that ditto. I need to take out the Zora. Basically, whatever he feels is the biggest threat going forward in the next couple turns. 
he needs to identify that and cut Stefan off. All right, we do see Stellar Wish being used with that Jirachi in the active position, going to find a Nest Ball, which is in turn going to find another Zapdos. So Magnus just continuing to build his board out here. Yeah, and the one great utility that this deck allows uh, with Guzma is being able to Guzma, bring up the Jirachi with an escape board, use it for a free card, and then retreat for free because, you know, escape board's a busted card. Yeah, I mean, why not? Just again, just the, the advantage of this Jirachi provides is just being able to look. He's just played two Nest Balls and gotten two Pokemon on the bench just out of nowhere. Yeah, it does get that Blitzel down, but with the Zeeb Strike, a prize could just be a little red herring. So now a full bench for Magnus, bench full of electric and metal Pokemon. And then got to imagine soon we're going to see that Jirachi end up in the active position, but not before Viridian Forest is going to trade in a Jirachi for a lightning energy just to have an energy attachment on this turn. Yeah, Viridian Forest is one of the best stadium cards in the format right now. Being able to discard a card from your hand to search for a basic energy, usually kind of a double-edged sword. Helps your opponent out a lot, but against a deck like Stefan's, he plays zero basic energy, just a four triple acceleration and four double colorless. Yep, and there is the knockout. First prize goes to Magnus. That Ditto Prism Star is no more. It is sent to the Lost Zone. Stefan evolving into a pair of Zorark GXs. Substrika is still in the prizes. Oh, this is a great turn from Stefan here. Two Zorark coming down, like you said, and this judge is going to shuffle away the giant hand that Magnus has been building off that turn one Lily and these multiple Stellar Wish. Yep, and it's going to put both players to four, of course, but then Stefan has access to that trade ability to kind of just undo all of that, leaving Magnus without a Zipstreaker and only four cards in hand. All right, he's going to need to rely on these two trade abilities to try to get some Pokemon. He needs two basics to be able to knock out the active Zapdos. And with that first trade, draws into Tapu Lele and Ultra Ball. He has it, but does he want to commit that much to it? Here we go. We see the double colorless getting rid of... Oh. Or the trade getting rid of the other double colorless. Looks like he has... Draw on another basic, you might be considering Ultra Balling here. Yeah, uh, even so, like, I might just consider Ultra Ball away the Mew that you drew. It is not useful at all in this matchup, and I'd much rather have uh, something like a Meow. Yeah, uh, perfect targets for the Ultra Ball, getting rid of the Mew and the Persian GX, and it looks like Stefan will be able to fill his bench and take the knockout on that Zapdos this turn. There is a third Zora coming down. Uh, Zorark is just naturally uh, pretty great against Zapdos. Uh, Ride is speeding with your full bench, does 120 damage for two energy. Zapdos has 110 HP, so it is not long for this field. And there is the Tapu Lele Wonder Tag ability. In addition to just boosting the damage of Ride is beating to allow Stefan to score the knockout this turn, it will be finding a supporter. It's a very obviously powerful card that we've seen throughout its uh, legality in the standard format. Looks like he's debating between a Lily and a Guzma here. Yeah, so it, it depends. He does have uh, some access to draw with the two Zorark GXs in play. Uh, so he might be thinking, well, I could target down something like that Tapu Koko Prism. If I get rid of it, it'll be gone for the entire game, it being a Prism Star card. Once it gets discarded, it gets put to your loss zone. And there is a knockout. Players now tied 5-5 five to five in prizes. Magnus, of course, immediately sums up that Jirachi. Going to go ahead and use the ability to find, look at the top five cards, find a trainer card. Yeah, and that's the power of this deck. Uh, you're attacking with a Zapdos. And after you attack, it's actually one of the worst cards. You don't want that in your active spot. You kind of want your opponent to knock it out. And that way, you just bring up your Jirachi. I'll get free cards. I love free cards. Exactly, and also giving you an opportunity to retreat with the escape board into that Zapdos again. Just the perfect little one-two punch, our Jirachi and Zapdos. Ops to grab the switch off that first Stellar Wish, and now just retreats to the bench Jirachi, and we will spin the wheel again. What is he digging for here? Let's see a Guzma, and I think that's probably the answer. He takes the Guzma. Again, you just try to get as many of these cheap knockouts as you can off Zoroa, off Seal. Uh, it is a lot harder to knock out this 210 HP GX Pokemon. Looks like this Nest Ball is going to find a Buzzwole. Immediately plays that onto the bench. Yeah, and this is the big swing card of the matchup, right? Uh, you kind of take these cheap prizes. Your opponent is able to knock you out pretty fast as well. And then all of a sudden, 
you come up with Buzzwall, your opponent's at four prizes, now you're doing 240 layer Zoroarks. Yeah, giving you a little bit of an extra punch there, as it were, and we see Viridian Forest finds a Fighting Energy, and Guzma taking out that seal, switching up to Zapdos, and we're going to see another knockout, four prizes remaining for Magnus. No outs to Dugong currently on the board for Stefan. Yeah, definitely the best start you can really ask for from Magnus. No threat of any kind of tech Pokemon. It's really just looking like a Zorark deck with a bunch of Taboo Lele right now. Yep, one bench plot left for Stefan. Two Zorark GX, so that means two trades active. Uh, the first, the active one is ready to attack. Stefan going to take some time to think about exactly how he wants to sequence this turn. Again, the next prize that Stefan takes is going to turn on that Buzzwool. Very important for him to keep in consideration. But not really drawing much anything of use. We saw him take that Lily last turn and opted just to discard it, drew another one. But his hand is clogged. I think there's three triple acceleration in yeah, his hand. So we call it a triple triple. A triple triple. Fun. Considering his options, looking like he might cash in one of those triple acceleration energies, but not before playing a Lily. This Lily draws, what, one card? Yeah, and just the one it's that a draws Guzma. Guzma. A goodbye, triple and, acceleration. Oh, man. He is just not drawing the cards in the right, like, sequencing he's needed. He is drawing all the cards that he would want, like, turn two. <laughs> yeah. It's a bunch of energy in hand. He's able to cash one of them in for a trade, but I think he's, does he use all of his trades now? I believe so, yes. Trying a double colorless energy and that Guzma, of course. Guzma. It doesn't even take the knockout. Nope, Looking for a basic. a basic here, and this is going to be huge. And we mentioned that if he we was going to take a prize, it would turn on the buzzwall, but he didn't even actually end up getting that far, just putting some damage on the Zapdos. Yeah, and we know Magnus had that switch from the Stellar Wish from the previous turn. So we'll go ahead and switch into the escape board, Jirachi. That is three Electro Power in his hand, by the way. Getting ready for a big boost here. We're going to spin the wheel with the Jirachi. Yeah, one important thing of note, though, is with Stefan not taking the knockout the last turn, Buzzwool still only does 30 damage. Uh, could have been a big brain play. It is not quite turned on. You see all those Electro Power, unfortunately. Will not be boosting the Buzzwool, looking at the cards from the Stellar Wish. Reviewing his hand again, just making sure he makes the right call. So he does opt not to get anything off that Stellar Wish, meaning he will try to Lily this turn. Cannot play the Nest Ball. He has a full bench. Oh, he's discarding he's with discarding the Forest. There we go. So, saying, I don't want to take anything. I'm going to pitch this to the Forest. I, I feel better that Stefan had to ask. <laughs> clearing that up. Yeah. There's the fighting energy. Fighting energy could come down onto that buzzwall as well, maybe just charging up a sledgehammer turn. He does have access to that Dance of the Agents with Tapu Koko Prism, meaning he could attack with it right now. Looking for Choice Band to take the knockout here. But no. No Choice Band off those three cards from Lily. Going to have to cash in the Tapu Koko Prism Star now. Those two electric energies. One's going to go right onto that Buzzwall and the other onto the Blitzel. All right. Are we going to have to see two heads flipped to try to take the knockout here with Swing Around? Another Buzzwall is going to join the party. Fill the I mean, bench go for it. Is. Why not, right? Yeah. All right, if he flips both All heads, right. that will be a knockout. But no, the first one is tails, second one's tails. Both heads, it's pretty far from what we needed. Just gonna it's a little anticlimactic. A little bit, yeah. So just going up to 160 damage is that Zork, and the action is back on Stefan now. Yeah, does have a field blower as his draw for the turn, but he's going to really need to trade into a ton of stuff. Observant players will, or viewers will notice that we have an hour left in the match because we start with 75 minutes once we get to the elimination round. So plenty of time for these players to hopefully play out their games and have nice full matches. 
But again, these trades have not been kind to Stefan. He finally gets a rescue stretcher. That means he'll be able to at least fill his bench up. But that's really not what you want to see. I don't think he can actually take the knockout here on this Buzzful. He might be forced to Ace Arola and bring up the Tapu Lele and attack with Energy Drive for 100. Looks like he is strongly considering Ace Rolling the active, just saying, all right, I don't want this damage to be here. Let's put this double color list back into my hand. Yeah, now. it's rough because if you put up the Zorark, you run the risk of him drawing into the choice band or just flipping double heads this time. Yes, yeah, it looks like Stefan's really debating on which one to do. Looks like he's going to go ahead and go with that Zorark GX. But no, really, really important decision here. One thing that Acerola also does that actually benefits Magnus is if Stefan plays down that Zora, or Zora again, that means it's just an easy target for Guzma and Zapdos to take a knockout. And Magnus is all about those cheap prizes. Looks like we're not going to see the Zora hit the field just yet. Instead, we're seeing an Ultra Ball for what looks like a seal. And that's going to hit the board for Stefan. All right, but again, uh, this seal is a pretty easy knockout for Zapdos, but with the, the, the potential knockout of swing around, would you be tempted <laughs> to, to flip the, the two heads? I mean, I, I'm always tempted to gamble when I can. Field Blower is going to get rid of the uh, Viridian Forest and the Escape Board. All right, but there we go. There's the right is beating for 120 damage. Yes. Stefan is really wishing he had his Giratina in his discard right now. The players uh, just kind of trading damage without really trading any knockouts. Of course, Stefan's board clear of damage from the ace roll on his last turn. Yeah, this is an unfortunate hand for Magnus right now. Those three Electro Power have been in there for at least a couple turns. And having that Lily, you can't really get your max value out of it because you don't want to waste those Electro Power. Uh, these big GXs need those to be knocked out. Yeah, it looks like the tension that Magnus has right now. And he just decides, all right, I'm going to play the Lily draw two cards. Oh, he gets the Choice Band as the sixth card. That means Swing Around will be able to take the knockout here, and Magnus will go down to two prizes in top eight. That looks like that was a wise choice for him. He only has two prizes left, one oh. GX knockout. He remaining. gets that Deep Striker as well. We could see a giant Electro Power turn from him next turn to win the game. Seal's going to be promoted to the active position for Stefan. Looks like Meowth was the draw. Stefan still with five prizes remaining. Now two Zora GX on the board. Eyeing down that Ultra Ball. Definitely looking for a Dugong here could put in a lot of work, but he has discarded two triple acceleration energy already. I still think he has one in hand. He does. Yeah, he does have one in the back of his hand there. He is going to play the Ultra Ball. Looks like Rescue Stretcher and Meowth are going away. And he cashed in for what I imagine is a Dugong. Yeah, and Stefan playing around Sledgehammer perfectly uh, does not want to give up that free knockout just to one energy against Magnus. Yeah, trying to set up this two uh, prize turn here with the power of Dugong. Stefan reviewing the discard pile, just making sure he knows what resources he has left. There's the Dugong. Oh, he has a judge as well. That could be huge. Being able to get rid of that Zeev Striker that Magnus just got from the prizes. There's a triple acceleration energy. And Judge coming down, question mark. It looks like it will. So both <laughs> players will be shuffling their hands into their decks and just drawing four more cards. Yeah, again, this doesn't have as good of a value as you would think, uh, putting Magnus down to four cards, five with his draw. But he does have the option of Stellar Wish with Jirachi. Although the early field blower a few turns ago Getting rid of that escape board does make it a little bit harder for him. Yeah, he can't really do the double Jirachi things as easily, but he does have that one energy on the Jirachi, so hopefully that'll help him out. Here is a trade for the turn. Pokemon communication getting cashed in. And now the Nest Ball. Does have a Guzma for next turn if he wants to, but there we go, the dual Blizzard. 
taking a knockout on the Zapdos and the Buzzswole. Clearing the, the board of two Pokemon, now four energy, the three. going to three prizes, avoiding the Buzzswole turn. Great play by Stefan. Three to two prizes, and it is now Magnum Peterson's turn to react. And his hand off that let loose is not too hot, but I think that is a Cynthia off the top of his deck here. As Rescue Stretcher could buy back some of those Zapdos. Yeah, it looks like that's what's going to happen here. Just going to use the mode that just brings back one, puts it right onto your bench. So now you have the option, do you Cynthia and then Seller Wish after it? Magnus looks like that is the correct play. Go ahead and shuffle his hand into his deck, draw a fresh hand of six, and then he'll be able to use those cards he draws plus the um, whatever he wants a Jirachi for, if that's what he's going to do. See they, that Zapdos joined the board this turn off the Rescue Stretcher, and he committed an energy to it. So plenty of energy on the board for Magnus here. Only two prizes remaining. That's one GX knockout. But can he, can he get it? Can he figure out what he needs to do? Yeah, another good out he has is Tapu Koko GX, which I believe he drew off of that six cards. He also has escape boards, so he could get a little tricky, but Tapu Koko is the one card that can knock out Dugon in one hit without any help. And here is another Stellar Wish. Magnus going to consult his hand before deciding which trainer card he would like to take. Looks like Choice Band will be the selection. Choose the Choice Band, rest of the cards get shuffled in to what is a pretty small deck from Magnus. Yeah, and that's the usual thing that happens with the Zapdos Ultra Beast deck. You go through the entirety of your deck within the, the first like four turns, and uh, it's really hard for, as an opponent, to count on them missing the card they need for the turn. Yeah, exactly. The power of Jirachi just goes so far. You see the escape board attached to the active Jirachi. You're going to let that retreat, bring up an attacker. Looks we'll like that's what's going to happen here. He's going to bring up that other Jirachi, use another Stellar Wish, just trying to gain as many cards as possible. Yeah, and this is thanks to that Aero Trail ability from Tapu Koko GX, being when you play it, you can move it to the active spot and move all lightning energy to it. Uh, a pretty insane combination, especially with cards like Tapu Koko Prism. Yeah, absolutely, and it looks like that Tapu Koko GX may be hitting the field sooner rather than later. Going to consult the discard pile. Ultra Ball getting rid of the useless cards in his hand. Looks and eyes We're down. Do let loose Marshadow, perhaps. Maybe for next turn, uh, his bench will be full with that Tapu Koko GX, which is the most likely option for him this turn. And there it is, Tapu Koko GX, going to move all the energy to itself, going to move into the active position, and going to present a big GX threat for Stefan to deal with. Yep, Sky High Claws dealing 130 damage. It's not bad, especially staring down a Dugong. He's uh, finished shuffling the deck. Tapu Koko GX, the, a potent threat here. I take out the Dugong, take Magnus down to just a single prize? Yeah. That's a knockout. All right, one more knockout. If a Pokemon of any type will secure game one for Magnus, that Beast Energy stranded as the last prize of the game. He is so close to closing out this game. Stefan still with three prizes to go. He's going to have to work a little bit hard to get there. So where does the game, if, if Stefan's going to win, where does, how, what are the series of events that need to happen here? Uh, it's it's going to be hard. Uh, he will need a full bench to really get his max damage output. But uh, if he plays down anything that's not like another Tapu Lele or a Denonade GX, uh, it's just an easy picking for Guzma. It seems like he's in a difficult spot here with three prizes remaining and a bunch of Pokemon on the field for Magnus, including that let loose Marshadow that he knows about. You know, just try to disrupt the hand maybe next turn. Looks like yeah. Stefan's counting how many Judge he's played. He does have that pal pad in pat. hand, being able to uh, shuffle back in two supporters from your discard into your deck. Looks like he's opting for two Judge here. 
going for the double judge into an even smaller deck, protect by how many resources Magnus had run through. The trade ability on Zorark GX also lends itself to running out of cards very, very quickly. All right, and there is the rescue stretcher from his hand. Eyeing down, I think he might be putting back three, but it's definitely going to be risky. Looks like he's trying to consider whether he, what mode he wants to use. He does have the two um, dugong, so unsure if he has access to the other one, but it looks like he is going to go ahead and shuffle back in. Uh, it looks like a Meowth, a dugong, or sorry, a seal. Considering his options, checking his hand. Yeah, shuffling back, but again, yep. I feel like this Tapu Koko might seal the victory for Magnus, uh, being able to at least put some pressure on something, and he still hasn't used his Electro Powers, his Choice Band. Yeah, GX Attack still very active for uh, Magnus Peterson, has not used the Electro Powers, has not used the Choice Band, so many damage modifiers. Just, you only need to take one more prize, that's it. Yeah, well, not even with the GX Attack. Right now, the GX Attack's doing zero. Of course, but Skyhog Claws, 130. You just need three damage modifiers, and you're able to knock out a Zorark in one hit. Yeah, that's one of the benefits of Jirachi, too, is it allows you to uh, find the cards you need and just make your deck so thin that your resources are there whenever you want. There is a Guzma on Stefan's side. Going to bring up the Zorark GX that has energy attached to it. Take the easy knockout there. Jirachi gets promoted. Yeah, but we see There's a choice band. band. We There's see electro, electro power. power. There's a Guzma. Guzma. Band. That's the game. Taking the knockout on the Tapu Lele GX. Magnus pulls out the victory in the first game. And it didn't really look like Stefan had a way to close that game out towards the end. Yeah, Tapu Koko GX doing a lot of work there, just being a very efficient attacker. He's using all that energy, moving it right to itself, taking the big knockout on the Dugong, then taking the final knockout on the, on the Zork as well. Just a, that looked very, it was a very impressive showing by, by uh, Magnus. Yeah, uh, when the Zorak player does not get an Alolan Muck in play, the matchup kind of seems unfair. Just because anytime you want to bench a Pokemon so you can start setting up your big GX Pokemon, they just get knocked out. It, I just want them to stay in play for one turn, and the Zapdos comes out, and like, I'm gonna Guzma, Thunder's Assault. Guzma, Thunder's Assault, rinse, repeat. And we saw Magnus realizing how important that Alolan Muck might be with the first knockout of the game he took was on that Ditto Prism Star, cutting Stefan off. It, at that point, uh, Stefan was just left with the two Zoroars on the bench. So both of these players playing at an incredibly high level, trying to become the North American international champion. Uh, they are, they, they know each other's decks in and out. They know their own decks and how that matchup works. And they're getting prepared for game two. And what does Stefan need to go differently? Just to steal Olin Muck? Is that what he really wants to just stick that as early as possible and kind of ride it out to a victory? Yeah, essentially, uh, it really just stymies uh, essentially 80% of Magnus's setup. Uh, he still has like the regular supporter cards, but it's just so much harder to find them. You saw uh, in the middle of that game, he had a hand of three Electro Power, Lily, and not really much way to maneuver around. He was relying on his Jirachis to get him what he needs. And I think we have Beast Energy prize for Magnus. Not too much prize. The Acerola could come up big. Two Ultra Ball as well for Stefan. Looks like not the ideal starter for Magnus' side in that Mars Shadow. Oh. Stefan starts with Azorua and the turn one Judd. So Mars Shadow kind of being turned against itself there. Yeah, um, but oh. this is not good news for Stefan. Not having another basic Pokemon here and judging himself to just four cards, he really needs to find a basic because if anything Zapdos is good at, it's taking a knockout turn one. It's a very risky maneuver here. We'll have to see what Stefan draws off of these four cards. He needs another basic in play or he needs Magnus to His completely North American whiff. International Championship is on the line right now. Right, it looks like he did draw plenty of outs to basics with uh, an Ultra Ball and a Nest Ball in hand. So this game is not over. It looks like we will be having a real game. And there's a Nest Ball from Stefan. Yeah, we could see the Nest Ball for the Ditto Prism Star and maybe an Ultra Ball for the Denine GX. Being able to draw six cards and try to get some more stuff going. 
Yeah, the power of the Marchetto Let Loose that has the same effect as a judge is that it doesn't, doesn't take up your supporter slot. So you can make other plays, play the Let Loose, and then hopefully draw more cards and kind of undo the disadvantage that Let Loose um, you know, bestowed upon you. But uh, Stefan just had to take the risk, and it paid off for him. Yeah, somehow every time I, I, I Let Loose my opponent, they always draw Lily turn one. <laughs> and that Nest Ball does find the Ditto Prism Star. Like you said, Ultra Ball coming down. Now, man, you, you just have the reads, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do good sometimes. All right, Dead, dead A Change, uh, such a great ability coming out of Unbroken Bonds. Discarding a zero card hand, drawing six brand new cards, still looking for more basics. He's not out of the woodwork yet. Yeah, you do really want to have uh, multiple copies of your basics versus a deck like Zapdos. It looks like a Pokemon communication is going to help him part of the way, though. Yeah, the hand not looking too hot, though. The only supporter in there is a Tate and Liza. Like I said before, a glorified Shauna from before. Just shuffling in your hand, draw five. Another Zorwa joins the field on Stefan's side, and he just has to pass the turn. All right, now let's see what Magnus is working with off that judge. See, what do I tell you? <laughs> they Lily they draw five. They always have the Lily going right up two eight cards. Oh, but this hand is no bueno for Magnus here. Thankfully, he does have a fighting energy. He will be able to... Oh, yeah, he does have the switch. He will be able to take a knockout on the Zoroa with the double colorless. Uh, so, at, at, hey, that's all you need to do with this deck. Just keep taking knockouts. Yeah, awkwardly, too, Stefan was forced to attach there. Um, because he had the judge turn one. So that knockout's not only going to take a prize and eliminate a Zoroa, but it's also going to take out a double colorless energy. Yeah. Uh, one thing, though, to note is Ditto Prism it will still be in play. He can evolve it into whatever he wants next turn if he draws into it. He still has outs that Alolan Muck that you identified as one of the most important cards in the matchup despite this unfortunate turn of events. Some cards being dropped here. Yeah, Sledgehammer is one of the scariest attacks for a Zorark deck to deal with. Uh, and turn one, knocking out a Zorua is not what you want to see. And there's the knockout. There's the prize. Five prizes remaining for Magnus Peters. And he just needs to take five more to advance to the semifinals here at the North American International Championship. Stefan is playing for his tournament life here. He needs to win two straight games in order to advance. All right, this is a big draw. Double colorless off the top. Not really what you want to see. You can play it and... Oh, he does have the rescue stretcher for the Zorark, though. So double colorless comes down. Choice, Choice band man. doesn't really matter too much, but Tate and Liza shuffle his hand in, draw five. He'll need quite a few Pokemon to at least put some pressure on this buzzwall. But it's looking better than it was. Yeah, like Tate and Liza is was kind of saved him there. Only getting five cards, of course, not something usually like compared to something like a Cynthia or some of the really broken lilies we've seen throughout this tournament, but he'll take the fresh five. All right, he does get a nest ball off of the five. Oh, I thought that was the Lolan Muck for a second. <laughs> but no, that is the Giratina with its distortion door ability. Thankfully, he does have Zorak to discard it. Draws two basics off that trade. Not bad, not bad at all. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to fill his bench this turn. There's the Nest Ball. And dealing 120 damage with Riotous Beating means a simple Distortion Door, if the Buzzwool is on the bench, can just clean up that prize later. I really didn't see Giratina come into play in game one, but it may have a big effect here. Yeah, it was hiding game. in the prizes. Looking carefully here. choosing which Pokemon he wants to find with this Nest Ball. He does have the Meowth and I believe the Seal in his hand from um, the Tate and Liza. Yeah, definitely looking for probably a Zoroa, unless the Seal is actually a Dugong in his hand, which I think it is. So Seal off the Nest Ball has the Dugong for next turn and we can see a pretty explosive combination with that dual blizzard and distortion door. Three Pokemon on the bench for Stefan. Meowth is the fourth, and now the bench is completely full. Riotus beating, doing the maximum amount of damage that it can. Still just short of scoring the knockout. And now Action is back on Magnus, who is just five prizes away from advancing. 
but doing a little bit more than what he has now. Yeah, just having two Buzzswole as his sole attackers here does have a Lily to draw what we think will be five cards if he chooses to attach the Lightning. But again, I don't know if you really want to commit it too much. It looks like that's what he's considering now. Is, is it worth it? He is. Does look like he's often discarded with Force too. He couldn't get. He can get a Fighting, attach it to the Bench Buzzswool, and keep applying a little bit of pressure on the field. And that's exactly what he does. Fighting energy onto the bench buzz wall. Now Lily drawing five cards. W what, what is Magnus looking for on this turn? Uh, choice ban would be pretty good. Uh, just being able to deal more damage. Uh, you, maybe Guzma's for later on in the game. But again, that judge turn one, not having a Jirachi in play, has really affected the way he's gone through his deck. And granted, it's only been two or three turns, but... I mean, you, you, very just polar opposites of how his last game was. Yeah, you can see the difference in the number of cards that Magnus has, uh, the, the ability to just kind of go through the deck, get benched Pokemon, find things like Switch, find things like Guzmo without the Jirachi. Speaking of the Jirachi now, a little late to the party one comes. Look at that Tapu Koko Prism Star is going to be cashed in. Lightning Energy onto the Buzzwall, considering where else he wants to put it here. Going to go end up putting it on the Marshadow. Yeah, it's hard. You can attach it to the Jirachi. But the Jirachi is one of the cards that Stefan might target down with something like a Guzma. Uh, so you want to be careful about where you actually attach it. You kind of want to knock out the Marshadow, so you don't really care. Sledgehammer for 60 damage. We're seeing uh, the Lily now on Stefan's side after that, after that Dugong. So the Dugong is fully up and operational. Yeah, unfortunately, with the way Stefan's hand was, he wasn't able to get the the Guzma play with some sort of backup Zorark and double colorless to try to take a knockout and leave that buzz swole there. So he will just have to clean up his attack from last turn. And oh wow, has the Zorark GX in hand, can play it down, but that shuts off the threat of Alolan Muck in the future. He also has the Pokemon communication to find the Alolan Muck, um, if that's what he wants to do this turn. So it feels like he'll be committing one way or another now. Yeah, but if he takes the knockout on the active Buzzswool, the benched one is going to come up and swing around for the knockout itself. So it looks like Stefan has chosen a path. He has chosen to evolve into the Zorak GX, trading away a Tapu Lele GX. Yeah, and this is the one good thing about the Zorak deck now is with the use of Persian GX and its catwalk ability, if Magnus does take the knockout on the active Zorak, then Stefan will be able to set up his hand perfectly. Yeah, the Persian GX is such a strong card for this sort of archetype. In the past, you would see Zorark decks uh, get knocked out and then have to kind of struggle to refine things like double colorless energy, and that's just not a problem anymore with that Persian GX. There is the knockout for Stefan. That Buzzwool is no more. However, there is a backup Buzzwool just waiting. Magnus even has the lightning or the fighting energy in his hand. Oh, this is interesting. He has that Shrine of Punishment in hand. He can opt to play it and play the Guzma on the bench Zorark to maybe clear that. Uh, but you would need one heads. Does have the knockout on the active already. And his hand is looking pretty good. Guzma as well as an Electro Power and a Lily. Looks like he's going to cash in the Ultra Ball to the Viridian Forest. Just going to find an energy, smooth out the energy drops, smooth out the consistency a little bit. That yeah, Buzzword is going to do some major work to that Zorak GX this turn. You have to be thinking if you're Magnus in the back of your mind. Uh, it's already basically on the field. Stefan has an easy way to take two prizes with that Dugong and Distortion Door from the discard. All he needs is the Triple Acceleration Energy. And there is the Shrine of Punishments into the Lily going back up to six cards. We are going to see the Retreat now. And... All right, and there is a swing around, no flip needed, thanks to the 60 damage from before. Yep, that's a clean knockout. Three prizes remaining. Three prizes stand in the way between Magnus and a top four here at the North American International. Yeah, so I think Stefan has to go this route of dual blizzard. He cannot give a clear sledgehammer knockout, but even so, the Shrine of Punishment is going to soften up that Zorark 
eventually to where Swing Around will take the knockout, even if Magnus flips two tails. Dugong does get promoted to the active position. Dual Blizzard has done a lot of work on camera um, throughout this tournament. Really powerful card. There's the triple acceleration energy. Exactly what Stefan needed. Yet he could even opt to communication for the Nagonatal GX just to take an easy prize off the board. Remember, Magnus at three has almost a for sure knockout on the Dug or not the Dugon, but uh, any of the fighting weak GXs on the bench. It looks like that's exactly what he does. Communicates away a Mew for a Nagonatal GX. Not going to be too relevant at this point in the game, but like you said, just eliminating that easy prize for Magnus. Yeah, and I'd be surprised if we don't see the Persian GX hit the board as well. Just utilizing that catwalk ability to get those two free cards and taking off that easy one prize off Meowth. It looks like he is strongly considering doing that. And will he, will, will he evolve? Persian GX has hit the board. No more easy prizes. And one thing to note, Persian GX is one of the few Pokemon in Stefan's deck that can actually take a one-hit knockout off of Buzzwool, uh, either with Vengeance if there's enough Pokemon in the discard, or it's GX, GX attack slashback. Yeah, we saw Vengeance throughout the weekend do a lot of work for these Zorark players. Um, you know, you're playing Persian for the ability, but the attack's totally reasonable in some situations too, which is just a great thing to have on a card that you're using mostly for support. All right, and here is the catwalk eyes down. That Marshadow from Unbroken Bonds, I believe, being able to discard the stadium to get rid of that Shrine of Punishments. Also see something like Field Blower, but Marshadow does the same thing, especially if you're going to take the knockout on the Marshadow and the Jirachi this turn. You can see Stefan considering what the second card will be. Looks like the choice is a double colorless energy. Giving him another shot at attacking next turn. Right. They're contemplating it very yeah. heavily. Essentially, once you start shuffling, your search is final. So those will be the two cards he gets off Catwalk. And thankfully, Marshadow discards itself from your bench, so you still have room for the Giratina in the discard. So there is the Marshadow. Looks like he can Lily for a single card here. I mean, it's never what you want to see, but you got to do what you got to do. What he's going to do triple acceleration energy was the draw. Oh, he actually opts not to Distortion Door or discard the Shrine of Punishment yet. Uh, Marshadow also one of the most unutilized Red Knuckles attack, uh, being able to knock out an opposing Ultra Beast uh, if they're Psychic Weak. Yeah. So 60 damage being added to those bench Pokemon on Magnus's side. Both players engaging in a little bit of a slower game. This time around, Stefan's only taken one prize so far. You see that Shrine of Punishment in between turns is adding a bunch of damage to the board. Yeah, so Magnus needs to bench a Pokemon here. Uh, it can be any Pokemon. It just needs to be a Pokemon because right now, Stefan has game. Has that double colorless to attack with the Marshadow. Has the Distortion Door to deal the remaining damage off the Marshadow and the Jirachi. So a pretty big Stellar Wish here. Nest Ball, I think that does it. Uh, I mean, we, we see the Nest Ball as a consideration. Um, the Magnus going to go ahead and consult his hand before taking what looks like an escape board here. All right. And this is due to the fact that I believe Magnus has the Guzma in hand. So he can bench the other Jirachi escape board to it and, and then... Spin the dice again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who doesn't like free cards? It's one of the best things in the game. There we go. There is that escape board. There is the other Jirachi. We're going to see retreat. Jirachi Stellar Wish one more time. This is what Magnus has been wanting to do basically all game, but unfortunately he didn't get the chance to until uh, right here. You see he's shaking his head. Just not what he needed. And really trying to close out the game. Just needs three more prizes with that Guzma. Can take another two, and we just need one more. So right now, he's just trying to figure out, all right, what do I need to take one more prize next turn? How can I survive? Here is the nest ball. 
You can see again, he's shaking his head, just very clearly not happy with how this game turned out, especially after a pretty dominant game one. Yeah, uh, whenever, like, just a turn one judge, turn one let loose. It, it's so disheartening, especially when you don't start that Jirachi. I mean, you play four for a reason. Yeah, the lack of Jirachi very may well end up being Magnus's downfall here in game two. Oh, we could actually see a Guzma with a Zapdos. Uh, had the option to take the knockout on the Mars Shadow, chooses the Naganatal GX, has an Electro Power, and we will see a Thunderous Assault for 110 damage, uh, 10 more with the Shrine of Punishment. Yep, sh Shrine of Punishment in between turns, racking up damage across the board here. Now the action is on Stefan, five prizes remaining. Naganatal in the active position but Stefan does have the Guzma ready to go. Yeah, Guzma, and he could possibly take out that Buzzwole with three energy. He just needs that Triple Excel in his hand to go along with that Persian. Or he can also opt to dual Blizzard and drop 60 more damage somewhere. But this is one of the points where having that Acerola prized is going to be big. Yeah, you see the attachment of the Triple Acceleration energy onto the active Naganatal GX, and it looks like oh, he yeah. will Stinger be hitting GX. with a Stinger GX. The GX marker is flipped. Both players will be shuffling their prizes into their deck and then laying out three. So it doesn't really change the number of prizes for Magnus, but does basically just take two free prizes for Stefan. Yeah. Resetting things Not three bad. each. Uh, and has two free prizes on the board right now with Giratina and its Distortion Door ability. So he just needs to be able to take a knockout next turn, and he can seal this up and go to game three. And game three is really what Stefan wants here. He wants to keep his title of North American International Champion. He is, needs to win these next two games, as well as the next two matches to do it. But it all starts here with this game, taking the next three prizes. Can he do it? Well, one person in his, is in his way right now, and that's Magnus. Has the Guzma in hand. We'll be able to get that Zapdos out of the active spot. Both players, again, they have plenty of time here just contemplating what, what do I need to do? How do I, how do I orchestrate this so that I win? It's a lot on the line here. Uh, championship points, of course, the, the prize money involved. There is the Guzma on what looks like the Dedene. Yeah, brings up the Dedene. Jirachi goes to the active, uses Stellar Wish. Five cards among them, Rescue, Stretcher, Ultra Ball. A lot of options for Magnus here. Jirachi just lends itself to this kind of play pattern where not only are you drawing extra cards every turn, but it's not, it's not as simple as drawing. You have to look, you have to look at them, go back to your hands. Oh, yeah. Have, consider both. You can hear some clapping, I believe. Maybe something finished over there. We'll get updated. And we as, do have the other top eight match going as we speak. Um, so, a lot of action here. Looks like Nest Ball was the find with the Stellar Wish. Yeah, uh, not too important. And here we go, retreat to the Zapdos. And again, not taking the knockout here, no. but just putting a ton of damage on the board. And this is really where you wish you had Ace Roll in the deck if you were Stefan. I was trying to punish man again, adding just a little bit more damage each and every time. Stefan looks like he's going to go ahead and get rid of the Shrine of Punishment. He has the Giratina, like you've been talking about all game. Yep, Giratina Distortion Door gets those two prizes, and then all he needs is a Guzma and a Double Colorless or Triple Excel to yeah, win the game. We know he has the Guzma. I saw it. There's a Double Colorless. There's the Guzma for any attack. All right. That is the knockout. Stephon and Stefan Ivanov is still is, live. He's one step closer to retaining his title of North American International Champion. What looked like a pretty dominant performance by Magnus in game one, all off the back of that Jirachi. Things didn't work out the same game two, and after a pretty back and forth slugfest there, Stefan was able to orchestrate the three prize turn to tie things up and force a game three between the current senior world champion and the current North America international champion. Yeah, uh, it's crazy how much the Giratina plays a factor in this matchup, having it prized completely ruined Stefan's strategy. Yeah, I mean, we saw the Dugong attack like, turns and turns ago, just kind of setting up, leaving the prizes there, and then when it was time to strike, the Giratina was ready. 
Um, I think the big key difference between those two games was just the turn one judge and the access to Jirachi. Yeah. You see how important the Jirachi is to just kind of smoothing out the draws of the deck. And you know, just imagine a game where you play and you just get to draw three cards, three cards a turn instead of one. That's what that's basically what Magnus was doing for the first five turns, uh, and then you know you draw an extra one in between every turn. Just with that that card is just the linchpin that ties us all together. Yeah, it has seen its ups and downs as well as people try to tech for it. Uh, one of the previous techs that have been super popular is the Absol. Uh, adding an extra retreat to it, meaning Escape Forge doesn't really do its job very well. But people have opted to drop Absol for more of the Wobbuffet to counter the Tapu Koko Prism, the Ditto Prism. So it has allowed a lot of these Jirachi decks to flourish. All right, players are drawing their opening hands here. A lot on the line oh, here. A lot double of mulligan. Looks like they have a double mulligan. Players are going to go ahead and check out what's in their opponent's hand before reshuffling and starting again. Just kind of delaying this moment of uh, just the end of the stress. Just, just takes longer and longer to get here. Magnus Peterson, Stefan Ivanov. Who, who you got for this one, Jeremy? I see you can fill out a bracket here. Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely filled out a bracket. I had Stefan winning this round. Uh, so I'm <laughs> kind of glad he pulled out that last minute, but it, it's definitely going to be hard, especially with going second this game three. Zapdos just preys on those easy knockouts on basic. It looks like uh, Stefan has still not found a basic here. So we will, uh, Magnus will be going first and having an extra card in his hand. Didn't quite see what the opening Pokemon was for. It was a Tapu Koko Prism. Not the best yeah. opening, not the worst. Uh, it does only have one retreat. I think actually opening Zapdos is much worse. All right, Stefan, third chance at finding a basic here. Will he do it? He does. We can go look at, at those prizes. prizes. See, Stryka is prized again, but so far we really haven't seen it come into play this match. Prizes for Stefan. Doesn't really have much. Does have that Naganadal GX and the prizes, the card he used to win last game. All right, Magnus Peterson, Stefan Ivanov, the Mulligans are through. One game, 22 minutes left to advance to the semifinals here at the North American International Championship. Magnus will be going first, starting things off classically with a nest ball. Yeah, and we might just see a nest ball and an attach to the active to retreat to use that stellar wish. I don't, I didn't see much else in Magnus's hand. I could be wrong, but it looked like energy, maybe some Guzma. I did not see what he drew off those mulligans, though. Well, I, I didn't kind of catch the hand, but you can never go wrong with an early stellar wish. Yeah, it looks like two Guzma, uh, three energy and electro power. So he's really needing something off the stellar wish here. Cynthia card immediately pulled to the front. Yeah, last card is Choice Band. That Cynthia is huge. Yeah, it looks like this has to be Cynthia. There's an Ultra Ball as well, but it's going to be that Cynthia we just talked about this hand. And it looks like it's just going to go away. Six fresh new cards for Magnus. So very, is, very fortunate there. It's still risky, though, because you have a lot of cards that you can draw in this situation that don't do anything for you. You have four Electro Power. You have Switches. You have Escape Ropes. You have Escape Boards. Uh, so you really need to get the right combination of cards here. Another Jirachi could be good. Escape board as a, well. Here's another Stellar Jirachi. Wish. Exactly. This is exactly what Magnus wants to be doing in these early turns. What he did not get to do in game one, the second Stellar, or game two rather, the second Stellar Wish finds a Nest Ball. Nest Ball is exactly what he wanted to find here. Ops for that Zapdos. If he has a Lightning in hand, even better. If not, it is still okay. Remember, Zapdos attacks for one Lightning energy. One of the most efficient attackers in the game right now. Indeed, both Stellar Wishes have been used. We're just going to see a pass of the turn from Magnus that Jirachi is going to stay asleep. And now action is on Stefan. Looks like we're going to see a Nest Ball. First things first, Ditto Prism Star on the bottom of his deck, hanging out there. But it will be a Zorua. It gets chosen this time. Yeah, his hand is a little clunky here. He does have the Nest Ball, like you said, for Zorua. He also has a Field Blower to get rid of the Escape Board. Not really what you want to use your Field Blower for on turn one. You kind of want to save it for an Escape Board, plus maybe like a Shrine of Punishment. But he needs to kind of whittle his hand down because he does have that Lily. 
but right now it's not going to be drawing too many cards. Yeah, we've seen Stefan's early turns uh, kind of work out awkwardly. The last game, of course, he needed to attach the double colorless that he immediately lost in order to judge. This time he may need to make some um, suboptimal plays just to be able to draw more cards with Lily, one of the dangers of the supporter suite that we currently have in the standard format right now. Checking to see what is prized. Still deciding on the Zora. Again, it's either Zora or Ditto Prism. Those are really your only choices. Uh, but it all depends on what this Lily is going to draw. Looks like a tough decision here. Maybe a conversation happening with the judges here. Kind of gameplay action has stopped. I'm not sure what's going on, but we'll be sure to fix it and update you momentarily. Looking like there is a dispute, maybe. Yeah. Trying to listen in, not really sure what's happening here. Oh, Magnus does not look happy. Yeah, uh, not really sure what the situation is here, but there is a judge, judge issue. We're going to go step away from the game a little bit while this is resolved. Of course, as soon as we hear back, uh, we will let you guys know what is happening with the game. Um, and wow, what, a, what an interesting uh, match is happening down there. One to one, a lot on the line here. Both of these players really looking to advance. Of course, we have the other top eight. I think the other top eight match finished. I heard some cheering. Yeah. Not quite sure what happened with them. But all the top eight matches are playing out um, as we speak. And of course, after these conclude, we will play down to the top four and just save the finals for tomorrow, aka Championship Sunday. All right, so you, you talk to me about my bracket. Who do you have winning this game, at least? Uh, I gotta, I'm just betting it all on Stefan. I, I want the back-to-back. -back. I want the repeat. Uh, it's just a, such, a, such a good story. I mean, there's a lot of good stories of this tournament. Uh, like we already talked about this top eight is really, really, really cool. But I'm just hoping for the back-to-back. -back. I just want Stefan to be international champion for the rest of the time. <laughs> just win everyone, just every everyone, summer. Everyone, yeah. Yeah, it has been a crazy weekend here, and I cannot wait to finally crown a winner. Uh, one of my favorite international championships we've had. Uh, definitely casted one of my favorite games, uh, like ever, with Hunter versus Stefan. So it looks like uh, we're going to reverse the game state a little bit. It was actually uh, the early Tabu Coco Prism was the starter. And then he retreated twice. Yeah, actually retreated that is right. Into the Jirachi, attached the skateboard, and retreated again. Uh, I think, I don't exactly know what exactly is going to happen. I think they're t going to reverse the game state so that the Nest Ball and, and Zapdos doesn't happen. Yeah, uh, it does seem what it looks like. And we'll get uh, any uh, awarded penalties uh, resolved for you there. But that is pretty rough here for Magnus. Yeah, that, that changes things a lot. Um, you know, seems like both players didn't, or neither player quite caught that. Um, looks like the deck has been randomized again. The cards that have already been played are still in the discard pile. Uh, that Stellar Wish, the first one happened. The skateboard has been attached. And I think this is at the point where no illegal actions have been made. Yeah, he got the skateboard off that first Stellar Wish. And then there's the flip for the sleep. OK, and then Stefan can continue on with his turn. So we basically just reversed back. Uh, there will be no penalties assigned, as uh, far as I know. Yeah, able to reverse the game state. Nothing too bad happened in the meantime. Thankfully, no one played a judge or a marsh out of let loose. Yeah, I don't know if we stopped the match clock, but I assume there's a few more minutes on that. Uh, we'll get official words soon. All right, but back to All right, so as we were talking about a couple turn. minutes ago, there's the field blower. Forced to just use that on the um, escape board, and now we see the big Lily for five cards, drawing all the way up to eight. Does get another Zorua. Uh, not much else has that Marshadow, but it's something you really want to save for later. But opting to bench it down. Uh, I have to correct myself. It's actually going to be a double prize penalty on Magnus's side. So Stefan only needs to take four prizes in order to win this second or er, win this third game. I got a weird question. How does double prize penalty work with Stinger GX? <laughs> Uh, I think it just would, would work normally, just there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, so, so now action's back on Magnus. We are seeing a Stellar Wish. 
All right, well, he finds the nest ball anyway. Yeah, it's, a, it's also a lot easier of a decision for the field blower last turn right now. It's yeah. You're sticking this Jirachi active instead of just kind of wasting the card. But then now he nest balled to nest ball. Must have been his draw for the turn as well. So Buzzswole and Zapdos come down. We know Magnus has that Beast Energy Prism card in his hand, meaning Buzzswole can start dealing a ton of damage. But somehow that Marshadow is really threatening it. We could see uh, that Guzma. Uh, what, how, what's the interaction between Stinger? Yes. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Stefan's actually, actually asking, asking the interaction. So we'll, get, we'll get official words soon. I'm psychic. Yeah, you don't always uh, see prize changing, of changing the number of prizes a player has without actually taking knockouts. <laughs> so it looks like play will continue on while uh, we get official confirmation on that interaction. Yeah, all right. Uh, I, I love this. <laughs> I just love interesting scenarios. So unfortunately for Magnus here, he does not have the lightning energy. He would have loved to use that Guzma plus the lightning energy to take out that Zoro with the double colorless. Uh, having that beast energy, you could have done the same with that Buzzswole, but then that Marshadow comes and just ruins your day for one energy. So here we see just the Cynthia, and he's going to need a lot now. A way to retreat the Jirachi, and then energy to attack with the Zapdos. Yeah, without that escape board, and it looks like... Oh, he did not hit a way to retreat, so there will be no attack here from Magnus. And he, he is... has to pass the turn yeah. back. Yeah. Stefan has escaped once again with the basic that he needs. And there's a Zorak GX hitting the board. Now, but the awkward thing for Stefan, he does not have a way to retreat. He does have the Pokemon communication putting back the Alolan Muck. It could net him a Tapu Lele if he chooses to. That means he can start attacking or he can just get that Zorark and start trading and maybe trade into something like a Guzma. Pulls the Zorark GX to the front of the bench. That's going to hit the board. Two Zorark GXs on board for Stefan. Now, started the turn with none. Now he has two trade abilities every turn. And there is the first one discarding the judge. Not needed right now. Seal is a good pickup. You can always use more bench Pokemon, especially with how we saw Dugong just completely take over that game only just five turns later. Two cards off of the Lily. There's a Seal onto the bench. And discards that Lily again. Tate and Liza, that could have been something you could have used this turn to switch and attack. Unfortunate that he already played that Lily. Looks like a Meowth is going to join the party now. Then we'll just see a pass the turn back. And both players. Pretty uneventful first few turns for these decks that have been so fast out of the gates. And that Jirachi is going to stay asleep, so an escape board will be needed here. Or another switch effect. And it well, that Stellar Wish does not net either. Looks like an Ultra, Ultra Ball. Ball. Yeah. Magnus does have a Guzma in his hand, though, so he will be able to start swinging and taking some prizes. But once he starts doing that, Stefan's going to counter back. So Ultra Ball, just deciding which cards to discard. There is Magnus. And discarding that Nihiligo and an Electro Power. Nihiligo is one of the cards that uh, really helps out the Zapdos uh, Ultra Beast deck. But later on in the game, being able to copy any attack on your opponent's side of the board if they're at two prizes, right now, not where you're really looking for. And it looks like he's going to end up taking that Marshadow let loose. I, I love it that Stefan's still, still asking, like, I, yeah. I just want a stinger. I want, I want I to take one prize to win. Well, I want to know the answer. I don't, I don't actually know what the interaction is. You believe so. Like, can I get an official word on this? Yeah, he's definitely going to ask for the... The official ruling as play continues. Magnus, meanwhile, using Dance of the Ancients, gets the one lightning, attaches it to that Buzzswole. And with that Viridian Forest, he'll be able to start swinging around as well. But this Let Loose, he's going to need to find skateboard, switch, skate rope, something. Yeah, this Let Loose is actually going to be a lot more uh, painful for him. I feel like Stefan has the two trade abilities in play, whereas Magnus has that Jirachi just kind of stuck there asleep. That just shows how big that uh, first turn was to double retreat mistake. 
went from a very favorable position for Magnus to just having the Starachi stuck there. All right. And four, four cards. cards. No. I don't see a way to move it. I see an Ultra Ball, though. Could he Ultra Ball for the Zeep Starcraft? No, it's prized. Yeah, exactly. He's just going to have to pass the turn. Jirachi is going to wake up. Stefan starting to turn with five cards in his hand. This is not what you want to see if you're Magnus, giving Zorark three extra turns to set up their board while you're just sitting there not taking prizes. Yeah, and this, this game just hasn't gone Magnus' way whatsoever. I guess the only thing of saving grace he has is that that Poipol has been stuck in the active for the entire game. And I, I, could, I could just tell they're explaining the ruling now. I just want to know what it is. This is <laughs> torture. <laughs> Looks like Judge is going to get traded away for Stefan. Has the Dugong and the Triple Acceleration Energy, but no out to get that Poipo out of the act. It does have the Double Cutlass. He might be forced to use it to retreat. And considering his options here, that Poipo has been stuck in the active position for the entirety of this third game. And there we go, Double Cutlass on the active. And Treat to Zorak the and be able to pile. take the first knockout. Something you usually don't say in a Zorark Zapdos uh, matchup. Yeah, especially not on what the fourth turn or whatever it is yeah. as well. So slow start here by both of these players, but it looks like that Zorak will be knocking out this Jirachi. Stefan contemplating deep in the tank, thinking about how the rest of this game is going to play out. Yeah, so he had the option of discarding the Mars Shadow to get rid of the Viridian Forest and then playing the Nest Ball for possibly the Ditto Prism Star so he can try to get Muck online. But opts just to save it and taking the knockout. Looks like Ultra Ball was the prize drawn by Stefan there, so that Neganatal, if uh, the Stinger GX is a favorable play, is still stuck in the prize cards. Yeah, Ultra Ball, again, would have loved to find Zeep Striker there, but it being in the prize cards means that's a no-go. But Magnus does have a Lily for a full six cards here. A full six after dropping that Jirachi will... Needs to find a choice band to take a knockout on the active as well as a way to retreat. Does the Stellar Wish find it for him? It does choice band, and then I believe there's the switch in his hand, and then with the Viridian Force, he has the fighting. All right, so Magnus can finally move this Jirachi out of the active position and actually start advancing the game. So here, there's the choice band. There's the second uh, fighting energy. We do see that gold switch in Magnus's hand. And man, these, these last two turns have actually really heated this game up. There's the switch. We're gonna go right into that buzz wall. No flips needed, two prizes for Magnus. Oh, and he gets a Guzma and Zeep Stryka off the prizes. Two of the perfect cards you can ask for right now. Stefan now is considering which Pokemon to promote. Yeah, unfortunately having to waste a double colorless to retreat that Poipol. Uh, one of the only, or actually the only way you can attack with Marshadow against that Buzzwool. So not having that in his hand, he might be forced to use Dugong this turn with triple acceleration energy. Oh, well, no. He just gets immediately punished double by colorless. Double colorless. Oh, no. In the active now. Not what you want to see from Stefan after debating about it. There's the first trade. This game has been so back and forth. Yeah, not a lot of actually, like, you know, prize-taking action has happened before these last couple turns. Just a lot of setup from both players, but it seems like we're off to the races now. Ultra Ball clearing out some of Stefan's hand here, discarding a seal, and it looks like a Tapu Lele GX. Persian GX could come into play here in a major way. Also does have options. It looks like that's exactly what he's going to take. Going to go ahead and activate that catwalk ability. Of course, that Zorak GX was knocked out. Oh, and last there we turn. go. Gets the Giratina. Uh, it's exactly what he needs. He'll be able to discard it off the Viridian Forest and then bring it back if he chooses to. Damage the Blitzel and the Jirachi and then take the knockout right away. And of course, remember uh, that two prize penalty was assigned to 
uh, Magnus. Yeah, he only, so, Stefan only needs three more prizes to win the game, and right now he's taking two of them this turn. Okay, breaking news. If the Mega Nadal GX, w Stinger GX would happen, uh, Stefan would only need to take one prize to win. It looks like that might I not I love it when I'm right. <laughs> looks like that might not actually um, come up here as we see that Giratina. We see that triple acceleration energy. Sorry? Well, no, what if he... Yeah, I just showed just before. Stinger's app? No. <laughs> All right, so Distortion Door comes down, Blitzel and Jirachi, like I said, Triple Acceleration hits the board as well, and we'll see a dual Blizzard. Two prizes, skipping Sledgehammer turn once again. Going and right down to three. Stefan needing one more prize to move on to top four, and again, keep his hope alive of becoming back-to-back -back North American International Champion. All right, one more prize. Any knockout for Stefan, but it is now Magnus's turn. As you can see on your screen, he still has a lot of work to do. That Buzzwall remaining in the active position, facing down the Dugong. Yeah, unfortunately, he has to discard that Zeebstrika to the Viridian Forest, showing Stefan, yeah, you made the right play by knocking out that Blitzel. Yeah, I had it, but uh, now I just have to immediately discard it. So there's the Psychic Energy off the Viridian Forest. Again, just thinning out as much as you can. Taking a look at the discard pile, I believe a rescue stretcher in hand for Magnus. All right, he is really looking for something like the Tapu Koko GX this turn. So Nest Ball, a uh, combination of rescue stretcher and Nest Ball going to shuffle back in the Zub Striker and put the Blitzel on the board. Or if he can cobble together possibly Guzma on something like the Persian GX and then retreating the Jirachi with that Psychic he got. Psychic or retreating the Mark Shadow. Same thing. There is the uh, Guzma. He's going to go ahead and in a shortcut here and retreat with the Mark Shadow. All right, so swing around. Two more prize cards. And there we go. There we go. That's the Our shadow. And the game, the match. Stefan Ivanov advances to the top four here at the North American International Championship, keeping the dream alive for the repeat, the back-to-back. -back. Unfortunate turn of events for Magnus there as the double price penalty definitely played into that game. But there he is, your winner, your top four competitor, Stefan Ivanov. Yeah. Uh, Zorak's still good, I guess. Still good, question mark? 